so now we're going to move on to some more complex factoring. And it's not it's not that hard, it just takes some getting used to. Because unlike factoring a perfect square trinomial or factoring the difference of two squares, when you factor a normal trinomial, it takes a little bit of guess and check work. So essentially, when you're factoring a trinomial, you are unfoiling that trinomial. So what you have to think of when you're going to do it is you're going to have two parentheses and it's going to be blank plus or minus blank times blank plus or minus blank. So when you factor your trinomial you have to think of what two numbers are going to multiply to give me 12 and are going to add to give me 7x because right now you know that there's got to be an x here and an x here because when you do your first x times x is the only way you're going to get x squared so to fill in these two blanks and to decide whether it's plus or minus you have to think okay what are the two numbers that can multiply to give me 12 well there's 2 and 6 3 and 4 and 12 and 1 so what two numbers are going to multiply to give me 12 and add to give me 7? Well, 2 plus 6 is 8. Two, 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So we know that we're going to use 4 plus 3. So 4 plus 3. Now, since this is a positive 7x and a positive 12x, we know that this needs to be a plus in here and a plus in here. Now if you FOIL this back out, you should get the same expression up here. Otherwise it's not the right. So x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 12. And that does, that does give you the same thing. Okay, so remember we're going to have two expressions, x and then x here. So 72. Um, what numbers multiply to give you 72? Well, 8 and 9, 4 and 18, and 6 and 12. If I add these, I get 17. If I subtract them, I get 1. If I add these, I get 20, 22. If I subtract them, I get 16. If I add these, I get 18. But if I subtract them, I get 6. So that means we're going to be using 6 and 12. So 6 and 12. So now you have to think, since I need to subtract these two, in order to subtract these two numbers and get a positive 6, that must mean that I subtract 12 minus 6. So that means that this that means that I have to have a positive 12 and a negative 6. So, so a negative times a positive would give me a negative 72 and then I'd get x squared plus 12x minus 6x minus 72 which would give you a positive 6x in the middle which does match this. So we have one more example that we're going to do, and, okay, so what two numbers multiply to get 60? So the first thing we can write down is we know that these first two numbers are going to be x and x, and that these numbers on the ends are going to have to have y's in them, because this is 60y squared. 
So 6 and 10 multiply to get 60. 4 and 5, 15. So 15 minus 4 gives you 11. And since my 11 is negative, that means the 15 is going to have to be negative. So minus 15 plus 4. If we foiled this back out, we'd get x squared plus 4xy minus 15xy minus 60y squared, which gives you x squared minus 11xy minus 60y squared. So that's all we're doing with factoring, but make sure you come back and watch the next lesson. We're, we're going to learn how to solve equa equations using factoring.